now he has, the noise has to be really, really very, very low. Not because the signal is not very high today. Because no mic. Can you hear me at the back or not? Or you're not interested in hearing? Can you hear me at the back? OK, I, I, I have to believe you. All right, so if you want to hear me, come in front. Right? There's no, no mic working today. Anyway, all right, so let's continue. All right, so let's, what we're going to do today is to take a look at uh, the types of, types of internet. Right, we saw yesterday, uh, uh, two days ago, we were talking about the media access control mechanism, right? And one of it is CSMA CD. And we say that CSMA CD, the contention base, the random uh, access mechanism is basically used by Ethernet networks, right? So the one we're having here in our, in our school, in our labs, are also Ethernet. Right? So we're going to take a look at the different types of Ethernet networks. So there is a standard defined, right? So ISO, International Standard Organization, has given a, a classification to it, 802.3, right? So this is the specification number given. It was created in 76. It uses the CSMA CD protocol, right? We know what it is all about now. So Ethernet functions as the core of it is CSMA CD, right? And these are the different types of Ethernet, which we're going to quickly look through this particular chapter. Right, before we go into the different types of Ethernet, let's take a look at the Ethernet frame. Right, frame is basically the data packet which is used by Ethernet to transmit information. Right? So it has a number of, uh, number of, of, of blocks. And the important ones is basically a destination address, source address. Destination address is where the data packet is, who is the recipient. Source is the person who is sending it, the machine who is sending it. In this case, the source address and destination address are basically the MAC address, the physical address, right? not the IP address. Remember, Ethernet frame is basically works on layer two. Ethernet or CSMA CD works on layer two, right? And then, so basically, these are the two addresses for the uh, MAC addresses. So we have the MAC address, destination, source. We also have the type of the length of the data. And then the data itself. And at the back will be the CRC code. Right? Remember CRC? Right. And at the beginning, basically, the preamble and the, and, and the frame delimiter is basically to say that this is the beginning of the Ethernet frame, right? So yeah, containing synchronization, beginning of frame, and all these things. So this is the standard Ethernet frame being used. So no matter which type of Ethernet do you use, whether it's one of these, they all have the same format, the same, same packet to transmit the data, right? The difference will be in terms of the content, in terms of the information you put. So again, I think he's mentioned here also that um, it's not mentioned here. All right, the minimum minimum Ethernet frame is uh, 64, bi 64 bytes, right? The total of it is, and then the maximum you can go up to about 1,500 bytes, right? And so. The des destination address is six bytes, source address six bytes, the length is two bytes, CRC is four bytes, so the remaining is basically 46 bytes for the data. So in other words, the minimum, minimum amount of data you can send Ethernet frame is 46 bytes. So even though you, you will only send one or two bytes of data, or one or two bytes or 10 bytes, your minimum size frame will be, have to be 64 meaning that the rest is basically empty, zeros. So it must fill up, right? So that's, that's what minimum, minimum is all about. So data, data minimum is basically uh, 46. So plus all these things, it becomes 64, right? If you remember these 512 bytes, 512 bits, we're looking at it when we're calculating 
the CSMA CD of how long you should, you should transmit a data before you get the collision. Right? You must transmit a certain amount of time, uh, certain amount of time to make sure that your, your data is received by the furthest machine on the network and you can bounce back in case that there's a collision. And we ca the calculations show that your, you must send at least 512 bi bits of data. Right? If you remember the previous chapter, we did some calculation there. And it says that 502 bits is a minimum amount of data you can send so that collision can be detected. So that's why the Ethernet frame, the minimum is basically 512. Right? To make sure that collisions can be detected no matter which part of the network you are in a local area network. Right? Ethernet basically works on local area net network. It's not for internet protocol. It's within a local area only. Right? So the addresses for the source and destination, as we said earlier, it uses the, the MAC address. MAC address is unique, embedded into the network card, network interface card. So if you network interface card like this, it will, it will, it will, it will be marked or it, it, will be, it will be printed on the card itself to say what is the, the MAC address for that particular network card. Right? So this card is basically, this number is unique. So 48 bits of it. And it's normally given in hexadecimal uh, format. So source address, destination address are both in MAC addresses. All right? So MAC addresses are only recognized by layer two. All right? So there are three types of Ethernet addresses. Right? Addressing unicast, multicast, and broadcast. Unicast means that you are sending the packet from one source to one destination. Right? If I'm, I'm talking to you one-to-one, -one, that's unicast. If I'm sending the same packet to multiple users, multiple recipients, then we call it as a multicast, more than one. Right? If I'm sending the data from one user to all the users, everyone, then it's called a, a broadcast. Right? So in this particular, let's say, class, I cannot be doing unicast, one-to-one, -one, too many of you all, either I use multicast or broadcast. Multicast means I must know one, every one of you. If broadcast, I don't care how many of you, I just speak once, everyone gets it. All right? So how do we differentiate it? Which, which particular address we're using? It's the, the one bit of the first byte. Remember the addressing is basically 48 bits, right? 48 bits here in the MAC, MAC address. So the least significant bit of first byte indicates whether it's unicast or multicast. If it's a zero, ends with zero here, then it's a unicast. If it, add, if it, adds, uh, if it ends up with one, one, bit one, then it's a multicast. If all the bits are one, then it becomes a broadcast. Right? So look at the first byte. First byte, if all are one, all the bits are one, FF, then it's a broadcast. If the last bit is a one, then it's a multicast. If the last bit is zero, then it's a unicast. So you look at the number here, 4A, right? If you convert 4A hexadecimal into binary, A is 10, isn't it? 10 is 1010, right? So 1010, the last bit is zero. So therefore, it's a unicast. Here, 47, 47. 7 is a, convert to binary is 0, 1, 1, 1, 4 bits. So the last bit is a 1, therefore it's a multicast. So the address will tell you whether, which, which addressing you use, okay? Okay, so that means this basically will be used for the, for the destination address. Because source is normally 1, one user, transmitting to multiple users. So the source address will be one MAC address. The destination MAC address will be depending which one, which type do you use. Right? If it's a particular one, then that particular MAC address. If it's many, then you will end up with one. If you're sending the data to all the users, all the network cards, then you will go to as FF. Right? 
Okay, this is the this is type. These are the Ethernet networks which we're going to look at, right? The first one. So there are many different types of uh, Ethernet. This is the first category of them, so we call the, the standard Ethernet. Right? If you look at the diagram earlier, we are looking at this one first. The standard Ethernet. So standard Ethernet can be divided into a few types: 10 base F, 10 base 2, 10 base T, and 10 base F. So in this case, all of them has 10. Starts with 10. 10 indicates that its speed is 10 megabits per second. That is the maximum it will go. All right. So now we are talking about the first type of Ethernet. Right. So there are four types, as I mentioned earlier. 10, 10, the 10 indicates 10 megabits per second. Right. And uh, the last, now the last indicator indicates whether what type of topology and also basically what type of cables we use. So T here refers to UTP, F refers to fiber. If it's a number, then most, this is most likely a coaxial cable. Different type. Two is a thin coaxial cable. Five refers to thick coaxial cable. Right, we'll take a look at this. All right, in Ethernet, in, in standard Ethernet, the encoding we use is Manchester encoding. Yeah? You, you remember that. So the data, the bits will be converted into digital signals by using Manchester encoding, right? On when it goes through the lines, whether it's twisted pair, fiber optic cables, or crystal cables. All right, so this is the first one, 10 base 5. So here what it says is that 10 refers to 10 megabits per second, B is baseband technology, transmission, and the 5 refers to 500 meters. 500 meters of what? 500 meters of the cable length from end to end. So 10 base 5 uses a coaxial cable in a bus topology. So 10 base 5, 10 base 2, 10 base, 10 base 5, 10 base 2 are both bus topologies. Right? So bus topology means that it's one single cable from one corner to the other corner. And the length of the cable is defined by the number given here. Right? So 10 base 5 means that the length of the bus maximum is 500 meters. From one terminator right to the other terminator. Cannot be more than that. If it's more than that, the signals are not guaranteed to be delivered correctly to the other side because it's too far away. Right? So you can have any number of machines here between 30 to 500. Uh, 30 machines to 100 machines, not more than that normally. Right. Anyway, so the 5 indicates 500 meters. So, it's, so it is a thick coaxial cable used, and then the connectors are basically the same. This is a, your end terminator, right? similar ones, and the transceiver is the one which connects the cable to the machine, so it looks something like this. It right? doesn't matter. <coughs> then the 10 base 2 is also bus topology. Right? The difference is now that the length is less, it's 2. It means that maximum is about 200 meters, or to be exact, it's actually 185 meters between one end of the cable to the other end of the single cable, the, the, the bus topology. Right? So in this case, the coaxial cable is a different version, which is a thinner cable. And we saw that last time, when you look at cables, the thicker the cable, the better it is. It can transmit signals further. Right? It has less attenuation. It, it loses signal strength less compared to a thinner cable. Right? So thicker cable can go longer because it does not lose strength easily. So therefore, 10 base 2, so a thin, thin Ethernet basically uses thin coaxial cable, only can last about 185 meters. If you use a thick coaxial cable, it can go about 500 meters. Right? So that's the difference. Otherwise, they're more or less the same. The connectors are a bit different, the terminators are a bit different because the cable is different, right? That's all, right? So this one looks a bit different, this looks a bit different, but otherwise, the, the, the principle is the same, right? 10 base T, again, the first two parts is the same, 10, 10 megabits per second, base band, and the T refers to here the usage of twisted pair cables. Now, if you remember last time when we say twisted pair cables, they are normally associated with with star topology, right? So therefore, 10 base T is a star topology, then. 
So if you start topology, it means that you need a central device, which must be a, either a hub or a switch. So if you're using 10 base T, then we call this a 10 base T hub or 10 base T switch, right? Because this switch is the one which, which, which regulates the signals at this particular speed, right? 10, 10 megabits per second, not more than that. Meaning that all users on this 10 base T will only, the maximum bandwidth they will get is 10 megabits per second. They cannot go any faster than that, right? No matter you use fiber or whatever, it doesn't matter because that's the standard defined. Okay? So we use coaxial cable, uh, we use tester pair cables and we require some kind of hub or a switch. And if it's standard base F, again, no, the only difference is now we are using fiber optic cables. So the fiber optic cables goes from the hub, it goes to the individual users. Right? So in this case, we have to use a 10 base F hub here. That's all. Otherwise, still say, so if, although we're using five optic cables, it doesn't mean that the users on this network can do things faster. No, because their standard is still the same. It's still 10 base. So 10 megabits per second is still, is still the maximum speed. Right? So this Ethernet maximum speed is 10 megabits per second. So this summarizes it, right, the three types, time base 5, time base 2, time base T, and time base F. Right, all of them uses Manchester encoding. And this gives you a, a difference. Right? So if it's uh, time base T, it goes about 100 meters. Time base 5 goes about 500 meters. This goes about 185 meters. Time base T can go about 100 meters. 100 meters off between your hub and your machine. So this, this, coaxial, this twister pair cable can go about 100 meters for each length. All right? So that means a machine here, if you're using 10 base T, that means this machine cannot be more than 100 meters away from the nearest hub. So the UTP cable on, on the floor here must be not more than 100 meters. All right? So if, if our hub is on the level 3 or level 2, make sure it's less than 100 meters. So if you use a five optic cable, of course, then you can go further. So then, then you can go, can go about two kilometers. That's the difference. Although the speed is the same, but the length can be further. That's all. Right? So limitations of this kind of, of networks, right? The standard network, standard Ethernet, which is 10 megabits per second. The limitation is that only one station can transmit at a time. Remember CSMA CD, right? One station transmitting. The other has to wait until the line becomes clear, right? Until there's nobody else, else transmitting. So this half duplex right, means you can either send or receive, not both at the same time. If you're sending, then you cannot receive, right? Or you're just receiving. The bandwidth is shared, right? Because when one user transmits, everybody gets the data, right? Just like your, just like the, the, the bus topology, right? When this, this user transmits, the data is transmitted, the packets, Ethernet packets travel all, to all over. Everyone gets it. So although only one transmitting, everyone is actually passively listening to it. So they cannot transmit now because somebody, is, somebody else is transmitting. So the bandwidth is more like shared. One person transmits, one person talks, nobody else can talk. Right? So if you only one station on the, on the LAN, then you can get, make, then you are only one can transmit. So you get, you get full capacity. If, two are, if you are two stations, it means that only one station can, can transmit at a time. So when you, you are transmitting, the other cannot transmit. Right? So if you, if you, on average, so it becomes like, so the effective bandwidth will be like 10 divided by the number of stations. So in this case, two, so you get 5 megabits per station, effective bandwidth on average. Because sometimes you can transmit, sometimes you cannot transmit because somebody else is transmitting, right? So the more users you have, the effective bandwidth per station becomes less because it's shared, right? So that's why for standard Ethernet, you cannot have too many machines on, the, on that particular LAN. So you can have not more than 30 normally. 
or like, like a 10 base t, for example, here, how many, how many machines we can, we can attach to this hub, it depending how many ports do we have. How many ports a switch normally have? 8, 16, at the most 32, not more than that. Right? So, a, a, a LAN, local network, we are using switch or a hub in 10 base t, cannot go more than 32 machines. You can put more, then it becomes, a, the problem is this. The more machines you have, the effective bandwidth will be even less. Right? Then you always, always congestion. You want to transmit something, you cannot get. Transmit something, you cannot get. Because many people will be trying to transmit at the same time. The more people there are, the more chances are somebody else is using it. Right? So the second type now, so to, to, so to overcome this, of, the, of this limitation, what we do? So instead of, so if, if this is a standard case, we have 12 machines on one, 12 pieces on one LAN. In this case, it's a bus topology, right? So the shared bandwidth will be divided by 12, right? So one way to do is that we segment or we divide the LAN into two parts, right? We put a bridge in there. So this one becomes one subnetwork. This one becomes another subnetwork, meaning that if this user want to transmit data to this user, the packets will only travel this part, this one. It will not come to this side because both of them are belong to the same side. So therefore, this user can transmit to this user. At the same time, someone here can, can transmit among themselves here. Right? Because they are on the, on the opposite side. So the bridge will ensure that traffic from this side remains this side, traffic on, from this side remains the other side. Unless, unless one user wants to talk to this one, of course, then, then, the, then the packet will go over. Right? So we isolate based on the segment itself. Right? So we call this a bridge. Right? So in this case, instead of 12 stations sharing the bandwidth, now what happens is effective bandwidth will be divided by 6 only. Right? So slight improvement from from 12 is not. Right. So the more bridge you put, if you can put more bridges, so one bridge can have now two segments, you can have the same, same bridge with four segments, right? Meaning that each user, each, each segment will have, say, uh, four users. Four users, four users, four users, four users. Or three, 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 three. Right? So then we will not get too much congestion. That's the idea. So we call this the bridge Ethernet. Bridge Ethernet means it's basically Ethernet, but there's a bridge, there's a bridge in between. Right? The third type, another, another way to improve it is that instead of using a hub or we use a bridge, we use a switch now. Right? So it is, what happens is that in, in a switch, it basically is that switch means that each each connection is already bridged, meaning that you have exclusive right to use. When you are transmitting, it does not disturb anybody else. If you go back to here, in this case, when, when one, one user is transmitting, it, dis, it, it disturbs everyone, right? because there's no restriction. In the bridge version, when one user transmits, it will only affect the users on, 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 on the same side. On the opposite side, it doesn't affect. Right? So a switched version means that when one user is transmitting, it will only affect between the sender and the receiver. If this is transmitting to, to tra this one, only the traffic will only be go going from this user, this user by the ports and out, out go to the port where the receiver is connected to. Everyone else is not affected at all. Right? So in this case, this user can transmit to here, this user can transmit to there, this user can transmit to there. So there are multiple transmissions taking place at the same time. As long as the sender and receiver are different. Right? The last point is, as long as sender and receiver are different, you're okay. Because you cannot send and receive at the same time. It's half duplex. As long as sender and receiver is different, fine. So if you, if you have, say, like it's not 12 users, then we can have six simultaneous connections. Six of them can send data to one another. 
right? Earlier, we only can send one. If it's not bridge, we only one, person, one user can send data. In this case, when it bridge become two segments, then two users, two transmissions can take place on, on either side. In this case, number of transmissions can be now increased by depending on how many ports do we have. Right? So in this case, the full bandwidth can be used, can be, uh, full bandwidth can be realized by each user on the switch. Right? So in this case, each user gets 10 megabits per second now. Right? No, no longer shared. Right? No matter how many users you have, each one guaranteed 10. Right? Because the switch will, will, will make sure that your traffic does not interfere with others. Right? But only, only, only condition is that you can only receive or send, not both at the same time. And the final version of the improvement is that you can send and receive at the same time. Right? So we call this the full duplex. Switch to Ethernet. Full duplex, remember, right? You can send, send and receive at the same time. So now any user can, can transmit and receive to any user at any time without interference. Right? So now each user can use the full bandwidth. So the effective bandwidth is now basically doubles because you can send and receive at the same time. I can send data at 10 megabits per second. I can receive data at 10 megabits per second. Right? So therefore, my rate of communication is twice now. Right, so the effective bandwidth has been doubled. Right, so from the first version, where it's divided by 10, divided by number of users, or if it's a bridge, then divide by 2, or if it's a switch, then divide by the number of users, to full duplex is basically multiplied by 2 now. Right. The only thing is that we have to use a different kind of switch now, which must be a full duplex switch. Right. So in this case, CSMA CD, doesn't interfere, doesn't, we don't have to use that anymore. Because whenever you want to send, we can send. Whenever you want to receive, we can receive, we can send and receive at the same time. It doesn't interfere with anyone here, anybody else, anybody else, right? When we send, we don't have to check because nobody else is, we have the full right to use. So CS, CSMA CD is not, it's not if useful anymore. It's not required in other words. So full duplex, switch network, ethernet, does not require the services of CSMACD. So you don't have to check the line whether busy or clean or whether clear before you send. You just send. It will be all right. OK? All right, so that's the, the standard version of Ethernet, 10 megabits per second. Right? The second type is the fast Ethernet. The difference is that, of course, it's fast. So fast means it's going at about 100 megabits per second. Right? So next, next level of standard. So again, it is own standard defined. Right? The, the standard Ethernet is 802.3. This one is 802.3u. Right? So a different slight variation to indicate that this is a, a fast Ethernet. Everything else remains the same. So the fast Ethernet is, com is completely compatible with the standard Ethernet. It uses the same MAC address. Same frame format, Ethernet frame, same minimum maximum frame length. Only thing is that it only uses star topology. So start the standard Ethernet earlier, the 10 megabits per second, we can use it for bus topology and star topology. Here it's only fixed for star topology only. Right? So fast Ethernet does not work on bus topology anymore. So no, no coaxial cables. So if you use a hub, then it's a half duplex, then we use CSMACD. If you use a switch in a fast Ethernet, then it becomes full duplex, therefore no CSMACD is required. Right? Then the other thing is that the fast Ethernet switch can also do so-called auto-negotiation. You can, you can negotiate the data rate between different types of speed. So you can have a fast Ethernet switch running at 10 megabits per second, but your station is, some stations, some machines are running at the old one, 10 megabits per second, or some are new one, 100, right? So what the switch can do, it can regulate the, the traffic. If your network card is 10 megabits per second, the old one, it will send you data at 10 megabits per second. If the network card is a new one, fast Ethernet, then you will communicate at fast Ethernet speed. Right? So both are, can be mixed. Right? That's what I mean by this. Allow station with different speeds to 
communicate. Okay. So fast Ethernet uses two, two, two topologies, either point to point, which seldom used. Mostly is the the one with the star topology. Right? Point to point means that there's only two, two machines. You connect with the UTP cable and say this is fast, fast Ethernet. Right? So this is seldom used. So fast Ethernet again they have a few types. 100 base TX, 100 base FX, 100 base T4. Now they all start with 100, meaning that the, ma the maximum speed you can go is 100 megabits per second. So the, it starts with 100 means it's, it's, it's a fast Ethernet. Right? Still uses baseband. And then the last part indicates the type. So if you TX, then it, it is basically a UTP cable, category 5. If F is a fiber optic cable, if it's a T4, then it uses a category 3 UTP cables. So different types of UTP cables. So again, this is basically the uh, specifications. Maximum length is all 100 meters, right? No difference. And uh, in this case, the line encoding it uses a few types, MLT3, which we didn't study. And this one, which is familiar, right? So NRZI. So it does not use Manchester encoding anymore. Really. Uses a different uh, different one, all right? Again, you don't have to memorize all these things, but at least at least know some things. At least you know the like hundred hundred base TX means it's it's fast Ethernet, right? At least the main one to know must must be able to know. These details are not necessary to, to to memorize. Next step up is the gigabit Ethernet, all right? So gigabit basically goes with. 1,000 megabits per second, right? So one gigabit. Again, it has own standard defined, A02.3Z. Right? Right. The rest is the same. Standard is compatible with, uh, compatible with both standard and fast. So downward uh, compatible. Same MAC address, same form, frame format, same frame length. Also uses star topology. Also uses switches. In this case, it goes full duplex now. No longer half duplex. If you remember earlier, fast Ethernet supports both half and full. Right? Half a switch. Gigabit only supports switches at full duplex. Right? So it can transmit and receive at the same time at one gigabit. And of course, it can, it can allow stations with multiple speeds to mix and then communicate. So again, gigabit topologies, point to point, normally we don't use this. So either we start topology where multiple machines are connected to a switch, and then or when we have many machines, we connect them with different switches and, and connect the switches together, right? Switches can be connected via other switches, right? So each switch, each switch can support, say, let's say 30, 32 users. We have 32 ports, 32 users can be supported in one switch. If you have more than that, then you, other switches, other users can go onto a different switch. And then we connect the switches together via a third switch or can be directed. Right? It's, it's basically hi hierarchy of switches, layers. Again, there are different types of giganet, gigabit ethernets. The main difference is that all of them start with 1,000 now. All right? 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Right? So we have, we have differences between uh, five optic cables, and then whether uh, and then we have twister pair cables, either is shielded twister pair or unshielded twister pair. Right? So if you just T alone, then it's normally unshielded. So this is the shielded twister pair. And then even that is different. Fiber optic cables are different. Which 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 wavelength does it use? Short wave or long wave? Which color of the laser it uses? So again, there's a differences. Right, so the five optic cables can give you long distances, right, 550 meters or 5,000 meters. And uh, for the STP, it's quite short, 25 meters. It's just, if it's a UTP, then it's quite standard 100 meters distance. Right? And encoding, it uses NRZ now. Right, so different encoding scheme. And finally, the 10 gigabit. Right, so 10 gigabits per second, A02.3AE. Again, everything else is the same. 
full duplex. Only difference now is that you use the switches, but main difference is that you must use five optic cables alone. So one gigabit, the gigabit Ethernet earlier can use either UTP, STP, or five optic. For 10 gigabit, it must be five optic cables alone. Right? That's, that's the main difference. So it's full duplex, CSMA CD not required, and gigabit Ethernet we normally don't use for individual machines. It's, it's too costly. Non, it's not economical. Right? So we use it to connect small lens into, multi, into bigger lens. Right? In, the, in the campus, for example, campus network, we use that. Metropolitan area networks, wide area networks, then we use gigabit. Right? Or we use some special networks, frame relay, ATM, asynchronous transfer mode. Right? So there are three types, again, of 10 gigabit. 10G base S, 10G base L, 10G base E. Right? All five optic cables. This is multi-mode, multi-mode, this is single mode, this is single mode. Right? You remember this? And some of them uses a different wavelength of the color of the, of the light. Short wave, short wave, this is long. And it gives you different lengths of cables. Right? Signal. Okay? Right. Okay, so remember your test on Wednesday, right? <coughs> 